All right, you guys, this is Ross. In today's video, we are gonna look at, once again, the jujube. This is a fruit that resembles an apple in its uh, crisp state like it is right now. Let me take a bite. You guys probably heard that crunch. Very crunchy. Um, not all that complex. It is quite sweet though. Similar texture, um, similar -ish flavors to an apple, but for a lot of people, I think a lot of you guys are probably gonna prefer eating apples over these jujubes. However, in a really warm climate, you may not have success growing apples, and these might be a really nice replacement for you guys. Or you can dry them because they will dry up on the tree um, or you can bring them inside once you pick them. Once they're uh, red like this, you can pick them and then dry them in a dehydrator in the inside of your house and then have dried fruit all year. You can cook with them. Uh, you can eat them dried. They have a different, a very, very different consistency when they are dried. And in my opinion, I actually think I like them a little bit more in that state. Um, it's different consistency, different flavor, and they last a very, very long time when they're dried. So I think there's a place for this fruit. Um, I'm going to go down towards the trees. Right now we're on a uh, little bit of a balcony in my, my backyard, right off the steps. And this is overlooking the patio of my potted trees. And my jujubes are actually right here in the corner. I have two trees in pots that I've had for years. And then they're in this clump of pomegranates and the figs are off here to the right. And uh, it's very difficult, unfortunately, to get to these jujube trees. Um, to show you guys what they look like, to show you guys the trees this year, I would just recommend, if you really wanna see what the trees look like, go back to prior videos, prior years, um, I don't even know if you guys can see me, but I'm down here amongst the trees. Go back to prior videos and you can really get a good idea of what these trees look like um, in pots. You get an idea of how productive they are. Um, I find they are extremely productive in pots. My uh, shirt here is caught on the bird net, which is not fun. Um, but they are extremely productive in pots, assuming you have the right variety. I found that Lang didn't necessarily do all that well for me, so I grafted over a more productive variety um, called Zhuzhou. And Zhuzhou does really stupidly well. It's extremely productive. It's not the best tasting jujube, um, but it is very productive. And that's really, I think, what kind of counts here in this climate. Because a lot of people struggle with this fruit in northern climates. And you can do it. I would, you know, if you really are north of me, I would, I would grow them in a pot. Um, growing them in the ground, you're going to have cooler soil temperatures. They're going to wake up a bit later, and you're just not going to have the... Uh, success that you guys are probably looking for. Let me show you some of the in-ground jujubes real quick. Here's actually two of my trees we have here on the west side of the property. I just planted these uh, really from a 10 gallon size pot. Um, these guys were growing in a pot for quite some time before I had planted them and uh, they are just getting themselves dug in, you know? Can't really expect a whole lot from these trees in their first year in the ground. Um, I haven't spaced them all that far apart here. Um, I don't know how exactly, how big they're gonna get, but they, they seem to really love to grow upwards. That's really more of the habit of these trees. And I planted these two varieties here specifically. This is Lee, and I think this guy over here is a sugar cane, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, the tag looks like it broke off but I'm 90% sure, I could always check my records, 90% sure this is sugarcane. 
and or not sh yeah sugarcane and they're they're just not that productive for me consistently in a container so i've decided to basically get rid of them um and put them in the ground because i think they may just need a larger root system that might just be a requirement for these guys and i was very reluctant to originally plant them in the ground um, simply because people have told many stories about the suckers and how the suckers come up from all over the place uh, for very far distances away from the trees and they're tough to control that way but if you have a tree that doesn't sucker because some of them will sucker you know um, some of them will put up shoots from the the soil even in a pot I have my Zuzhou that I grafted onto Lang and Lang would put up a whole bunch of suckers. And um, I think it just depends sort of how you get the tree established. You know, if you let, if there's not a whole lot of dominance, you let a sucker take over, um, I think it could become an issue. You don't wanna, if you do see some suckers, you definitely wanna take them out and get them in their entirety. This guy down here is probably from below the graft union and you can tell um, just by how different it, it kind of looks. So this one, you want to just take this out. This, fortunately, is not a sucker. So that's a good sign. But, you know, keep these trees nice and clean and pruned and all that. And I think you guys will be okay. You know, um, I wouldn't be too afraid to put them in the ground. And that's sort of what we're experimenting with here with these varieties is to see if, you know, if they're not all that productive in a pot, then let's try them in the ground and see what they can do. Um, I do know people struggle this far north and they claim that they don't have enough sunlight hours or they don't have enough heat. Um, and that's really to get the fruit to set, which I have never thought that was the issue. You know, I had them in pots in the warmest spot of my yard on a patio. It's definitely not the heat. And almost certainly, I don't think it's the sunlight. Um, although it's not a theory I can just certainly dismiss, but if you are further north, you should put them in a, a warmer location with a lot of sun um, if you want to have success and, and have them fruit every year reliably. However, I do find that the issue really is related to pollination. And so what I actually have to encourage um, pollinators, because there's really three main pollinators that I've seen here on these trees, which is flies, ants, and wasps. And I'm talking about like parasitic wasps. I've seen a couple different species. I think one is called the great black wasp. I think, I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. And it is a pretty large black wasp that you would be kind of freaked out to see if you didn't know what it was. And um, they're really awesome insects for this climate. And what I love to do is, en is encourage them to come and hang around this area and to propagate and to, you know, create a more diverse ecosystem. So what I have is plants around the yard and especially around the dejubes and even the persimmons and things I think it really would benefit is actually to plant um, some of these pollinators that would attract parasitic wasps. And those plants would be something like fennel, which I actually just, I cut that back after it had flowered. Uh, sedum's really good. Um, also, uh, flowering all alliums are really good. Now I'm caught here on the citrus tree. Yes, I am growing citrus here in zone seven. But anyway, guys, I think if um, you can solve a couple of these problems, you can do it not just in a pot, but you can do it in the, uh, in the ground. And particularly, I would pay attention to the bug ecosystem. Obviously, put them in a warm spot, but that's my current theory on these trees. Once they get a little bit more established in the ground, I think these varieties will become productive. Maybe we'll see good production next year if I'm lucky. May have to wait till the year after. Um, I'm gonna do some more harder pruning because this tree is just all over the place. And I want it to really branch outwards rather than up, but I think these trees are in a good spot because they are gonna mostly grow up and that's sort of a good thing um, for this area, just in how dense 
everything is here. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode here. If you enjoyed this, um, check out the other videos we've done now on other fruits that we grow, not just things like figs or jujubes, but we have some videos on the persimmons and I may, I should put out a video here on the citrus tree when it, I guess when it starts to fruit. Uh, but we grow all kinds of different things here. So um, check them out. And we have a whole playlist that's dedicated to that. Actually here, my sugar cane is turning color and it's starting to get ripe. It actually has a few fruits on it. And let me just take a bite of this real quick. Oh, it's actually very good. This is a very good piece of fruit. Um, so I do like the fruit quality of sugar cane. It's just, it needs to be more productive. Honey jar is really my favorite. Kind of reminds me of this. Zuzio is probably the most productive. And Lee puts out huge fruits that are really for drying. They don't have as much of a, you know, a fresh eating flavor that some of these other ones do. So, anyway, guys, take care. We'll, we'll see you for the next one.